Hi, this is your host Sapli Bharatiya and welcome to our 2022 predictions series. And today we have with us Jonas Bonier, CEO and founder of Lightband. Jonas, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks a lot. I, I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy to be here. Of course, we have covered Lightband before, but I want to hear from you. Tell me, uh, what is the company all about? Yeah, so, I mean, our, our mission, so to speak, is, is, is to really try to help developers in general to build cloud native applications, you know, both quickly and, predi and predictably and, and to sort of navigate all, all the inherent com complexity of the, on, the, on, the, on the cloud. And, and to do that, we're sort of building a platform that, that, that does this or delivers its own prem in the cloud on in the edge and it's you know we're very much an open source based company open source is in our dna and core you know we've had we're with products such as Akka and play and and, and scala and we've and so we've been we've been using that to power some of the most in, innovative companies in the world uh you know all with a common theme of like the, the need to like fully available systems scalable and performance with a real-time type of systems uh so that's sort of the, been the recurring theme of the last 10 years, help, helping companies achieve that. Excellent. Thanks for explaining that. Now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and share with us what predictions do you have for 2022? Yeah, it's, it's, it's of course hard, you know, to, 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 to do that, but I'm, I'm happy to try, at least, you know, in the areas that I'm, ex I'm, I'm excited about. So the first one, I really believe that the distributed state in serverless is, 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 is sort of going main, mainstream. It's, you know, I, I don't think anyone will, will argue that serverless is on the, is on the rise. You know, it's getting more and more market share and 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 hype and and sort of growth predictions and stuff. But I I have to say that I really think that the the, the true potential of ser of serverless still remains untapped. You know, there are, I think there are mul some some multiple fundamental challenges that has to be addressed for it for serverless to really live up to its 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 promise. And you know there. The main thing is, is sort of um, a problem I have with with, with serverless as, as it stands today, meaning function as a service, is, is that it's sort of primarily state stateless. I mean, stateless is no by means bad. You know, it's like it's the ex an excellent choice to solve s certain type of problems, like like data pipelining, or sort of where you have multiple sort of embarrassingly parallel type of tasks, uh, and you move, want to move data from A to B and uh, et cetera, right? But I, I believe, you know, serverless is much more than that. It's a really, really the experience for how we want to develop for, for the cloud going forward. It's, it's, it's really like a new developer experience for anything. And that means, you know, I'd like to build general purpose applications in, 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 ser, in, ser, in serverless. So the question is, what is then holding us back? to build general purpose cloud native applications in, in serverless. And I, in, in, my, in my experience with talking to customers and stuff, it's, it's mostly around about, uh, 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 sort of evolve around challenges of managing state at scale. And, and you know, it's a fact that most, the, mo the most cloud native applications today are, they're non-trivial. You know, they have many different use cases across the wide range of, 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 of sort of wide sort of specs, spe like spectrum, all the way from like stateless processing, like we, like we just talked about, but also like data centric, more real time workloads, stream oriented, event based and things like that. And I really believe that, you know, state is, is at the center of many of these. So we need, we need really good ways of managing state and essentially us more, more tools in our toolbox to tackle, to tackle these things. And, 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 uh, you know, some, some of the tools include like, we need like really ways to sort of co-locate state with, with with where the user is. So co-locate state and processing and and user while remaining durable and consistent. And I also don't don't think that having this one consistency model for all the state there is, you know, is is a good. There's really no such no such thing as one size fits all. But but instead, you know, you need like a like sort of like consistency a la carte in a way, you know, raising from from strong consistency that the classic RGBMS database can give you to causal consistency to eventual consistency, and uh, you know, I really really think that that's what's needed in order to tackle you know, this new wave of real time systems that are being built today. Things like you know, payment system, auction systems, you know, streaming videos, online trading, we see, and you know, autonomous cars and or etc. Right, all of them trying to provide a real-time experience for the user. Uh, so, so that's my first prediction. The, the second prediction is, is I really believe that, you know, edge computing is, is, is the next big thing. I think in, in 2022, we will really see it grow even, even, even more rapidly. And it's the fact that we have an you know, excellent infrastructure today, but infrastructure 
by itself only solves, solves sort of half half of the problem. In order to really make developers pr 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 productive, we really need a programming model that takes like full advantage of all these new great cloud and edge infrastructure. And, and as I said before, like allow them to build general purpose applications without the needless, all this needless complexity that, that that's so easily, you know, uh, the people is easily, you know, end, like end up in. And, 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 and in order to, to do that, I think we need to take the, these like proven models for managing distributed state at scale into the edge together with this, like this serverless developer experience. So my vision for the edge is like, could be summed up in like, what if you didn't have to uh, think at all about, you know, how to store and, and, and manage state? What if you only had to think about your business logic, your public API, how, how you communicate with the outside world? And your domain data, what is, how it's structured. You know, what if you can become sort of database less and forget about everything about databases, storage APIs, you know, you know, OR mapping, caching, and message brokers, and all of these things. Instead, what if your services, because they'll be powered by sort of this sort of data plane of application state, they can run anywhere in the world, like for, from the public cloud, which of course uh, the majority of applications will still run, but all the way out to like thousands of points of presence out, out at the edge. And where it can really ensure that state is always where it needs to be whenever it, it, it you know, wherever it, that might be, you know, where it always can ensure co-location of state and processing and end, end user. That will really ensure ultra low latency and high throughput, you know, that what most people talk about, you know, is being the main benefit of the edge. But I have to say that, you know, that I actually don't think that it's only about low latency and performance and speed when it comes to edge. It's equally much about being constantly available and building truly resil resilient systems because, because, you know, uh, edge computing, especially stateful edge computing means that we can actually build systems that almost never stop. You know, it, it, it really allows you to work, that each service work with just local data that, that, that you sit on and own, data that's always right there and not being dependent on going out and fetch it somewhere and that mean, meaning of being, having to rely on that the network is up and that service that you're going to go and fetch it from is always there. We only work with local data, and when you want to communicate that data, you can do it point to point out on the edge, not having to go back to central cloud and, and, and go all the way back up again. But, but having these autonomous processes that can work out out on the edge with local data and just collaborate out there. I really believe that's sort of the next next thing that's going to come, and I really believe you know that, that that's that's where serverless is 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 going. Okay, my 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 third prediction is I really believe that like sustainability in in the in the cloud becomes a priority in two thousand in two thousand twenty two for for a, for a ton of 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 of, of companies. I don't think anyone can sort of deny that you know, that global warming is 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 a, is a real thing, and then we all. You know, Unfortunately, it's already starting to see the effects of it, and I, I think you know that is it's paramount that companies take responsibility ar around this and to like minimize energy co consumption. and And and, and I think that you know, one of the best and immediate tactics in order to, to do to do that is actually shifting cloud based applications over to a serverless architecture. You know that I think that will help not just to scale their applications more easily and all the, all the things that we talk about when it comes to ser to serverless. But also to like dramatically decrease the amount of hardware that we're using, and then by extension, the power needing to 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 be used to actually to meet our comp our computing needs. You know, this sort of pay-as-you-go model of serverless means that we're that hardware is really used as efficiently as possible. You know, you only pay for what you use, and you only use it when you when you need it, and when you're not using it, you know, meaning the hardware, then then someone else is. So it's really efficient, always like full utilization of hardware and 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 it and 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 this and the, and the second thing is like serverless also means that you actually delegate the, the the operations of the system to 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 cloud vendors and cloud vendors now can have the advantage of looking at you know the system the full system meaning all the applications running in the cloud holistically and more globally and can actually optimize across all of these applications you know something that if you're just running a single application you simply can't you know, because your 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 view is sort of limited to just your uh, your needs, uh, so to speak. I really hope that that sort of shift will help us slow down global warming in general. Perfect. Thanks for sharing these predictions. Now, uh, tell me, what is going to be the focus of the company in 2022? 
Yeah, we we uh, we're of course focusing a lot on these on 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 the challenges in these in these in these predictions and 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 you know our our latest product is called Aka Serverless. It is it is a it is a fully like like a, a, API pass that 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 sort of makes it very easy to build applications in a serverless you know experience on the cloud. So like applications that are always available, super low latency, real time type of systems, and we we and we just released GA for that about a month ago. So our focus here is like continue to to develop that and making it the best platform for for building applications and APIs in the cloud in general. I'm also very interested in taking that you know not just to the cloud as as, as we are now, but also you know bridge that over to to the edge. Allowing to run your your applications easily, like on, on, on thousands of, of, of points of presences, and and probably you know even more importantly, being able to to run hybrid cloud edge edge applications because I think it will take a while until everything runs in the edge. Even though I think actually it eventually will, but hybrid setups is usually you know the way. Uh, actually, I think is the way that that that, that people will start t- t- like tinkering with the edge and move closer and closer to where they. Where the usage is, uh, so I'm really I'm really excited about tackling some of these challenges in in 2022. Yes, thank you so much for taking time out today, and of course share your predictions, the focus of the company, and I would love to have you back on the show. Uh, actually, I would love to have you back on the show next year as well, just to hold a scorecard and see how many of your predictions turn out to be true, and then get the next set of predictions for next year. But uh, thanks for your time today. Uh, enjoy the holidays, and see you next year. Thanks a lot. I really, I really appreciate being, being, being on the show and enjoy talking to you. So thanks a lot.